All right, I want to welcome the Thriving Educator audience and Aspire to Lead as we're doing a collaboration myself and Charlie Peck. We have just completed a wonderful summit. It's called School Behavior Solution Summit, and we had just a ton of folks, Charlie, just sign up all across the world. It's pretty fun when we were going through the chat and asking people to kind of do a, a check-in and, and share where they're coming from. There were quite a few countries outside of the United States. Mm -hmm. There were people from Ecuador, people in the UK, people New Zealand. I mean, truly yeah. all over the world. Yeah, it was such a fun event. And we had some really high quality speakers join us. And we're going to just kind of do a recap for this episode and just kind of walk through some of our different presenters, what they shared, and then talk about some additional resources that our audience can get to. And then some fun, you know, additional things coming up at the end of the month that me and Charlie are, are putting together. So um, with that, Charlie, will you just kind of start it off? I mean, we kicked off the event, we were emceeing it, and we had the opportunity to do a presentation that's close to our heart, which is from the book, The Language of Behavior. And for those who are interested in watching on YouTube, I'm going to throw the link up, but you can get on that pre-sale list um, for our upcoming book, which we're super excited about. But with that, Charlie, will you just share out uh, what we were talking about with The Language of Behavior? Yeah, you know, one of the things we talked about is the impact of trauma on school leaders and then um, really strategies and tools that when they're bringing their own stuff in, how to adapt, like, and how to respond. And, and the, the answer is always about how we can show up for kids, right? And I think a lot of people are frustrated about hearing that, Josh, to be honest. And I'm not sure about like when you're working with people, but I, I'm hearing people think like, yeah, but I want the kids, I want the kids to like be fixed. I want their behavior to change. And the answer is yes, that will absolutely come with time and trust after that we, after, after like when we consider our own way we're showing up and the environment we're creating for them. So those are the kinds of things we started talking about. We gave some tangible strategies people absolutely love. So I'll give some of the feedback because what's really cool is that people resonated with it. And some people, um, every time we talk about connecting, people are like, yeah, but how do you do that? So we gave a lot of strategies about that, which was really cool. But they also responded to like the way we talked about discipline in more of a positive manner and the push-in method. So Josh, can you just give a t like just a tiny little piece of the push-in method? Because so many people responded to that. Yeah. So the push-in method, I, I, it was not created by us. We, we stole it from a group in St. Louis. I always want to make that caveat um, so folks know that. Um, and I set my source. But um, we just heard about it from another school. And what it is, it's instead of sending a student out of the classroom for a low-level behavior, which typically in the data shows that it's like a, a disrespectful comment or an interruption in the lesson, um, what we found was we were losing thousands of minutes for really, really tiny behaviors. And so this just allows the teacher to have a one-on-one -on -one session with a student where they call the front office, ask for a push-in, and then someone comes and relieves them for anywhere between three and five minutes for the teacher to exit the classroom, talk to the kid, really get to the bottom of what's really the underlying thing that's causing the behavior. Because typically it's something really small or, you know, sometimes it's big. And if it's big, you know, they're not going to learn anyway. So we, we might as well find them the resource to do so. But an administrator, a counselor, a coach, someone who's available and able to take over the class for just a short period of time um, allows the teacher to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation and really get to the bottom of it. But then also have an agreement to come back into the educational environment and we found that thousands of minutes were gained back into the classroom with a content expert. And it's something that I just kind of yell from the mountaintop <laughs> that it's a, it's a really awesome um, strategy that, you know, it does take some buy-in, but it's, you can implement it tomorrow. Yeah. And so many people reached out to me afterwards, Josh, saying, when can we get the workshop for that? When can you bring that in? Or when can you do a training on that? So if you guys are listening to that and you want that one method that can work immediately in your school, like it's something that you can set up and just start using, um, a little planning is involved in identifying people on your team that will kind of be a part of that schedule. I think the scheduling was a piece of it that we needed to figure out. But once that's implemented, that is something that you can start doing immediately as a new approach to positive behavior and discipline. And what I love about it too, Josh, as a former high school teacher, I loved that somebody was going to come and relieve me so that I could have that one-on-one -on -one time with a student, which didn't take much time, actually. It was like, you only need a few minutes with that kid to let them know like, hey, I'm here. What's up? something that we can mediate pretty quickly. Usually, not always. Sometimes it's really complex. 
But, okay, so that was really cool. And a lot of people resonated with that. And something else that I'm noticing people are still getting because the resources are still on our website. It's it's at thrivingeducator.org. I left all the speakers up there and their resources because people need them and they're totally free. So they're up there. But Josh, I put the link here too. I'm not sure if we can just put it in the show notes, but the wellness workbook is resonating a lot with people because you can use it with adults. You can use it with any age. You can use it with young kids. It's just it's just something that helps us reflect and gives us a little strategy around that. So a lot of people are getting that. So who else resonated with you, Josh, during the summit? Who else stands out in your mind? We had so many great speakers. We had so many great, and probably just because it's in the order of <laughs> where things were. Uh, Nathan Maynard joined us right after. Uh, phenomenal author, speaker. He also assists um, in a lot of different ways with school districts. And uh, he's got a new app coming out. Um, but his was on hacking discipline. And so that was kind of what came to my mind. So do you remember some some amazing insights that he provided during his session? Well, I just do remember that he had a lot of specific strategies about daily classroom connectors, and he had a resource about that. It was like the 20-day high-five connection curriculum that he was giving away for free too. So again, you guys go to the website, thrivingeducator.org under Nathan Maynard, uh, Maynard because that was awesome. I can't remember the specific strategies, but I know they were, they were um, things that could help like with that restorative practice. And he has said something about a mood meter, SEL yes. lessons that are actually part of that curriculum. So if anybody's even a school counselor and you need some tools to go back to the school with just to utilize in your own classes that you teach with kids, th I mean, this is something you'll absolutely use. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And he had, you know, he, had us close our eyes and he kind of had some, you know, different breathing exercises and talked about mental wellness, both not only with the students, but also with the staff too. Um, mm -hmm. And kind of all got us in a very good spot um, at the very beginning. So um, love his tactics um, in regards to mental health and kind of how that translates into the classroom, um, which was so very important. Um, right after Nathan, we had Todd Nisloni, my good buddy, and um, his session was on kids deserve it and really talking through a lot of different things in regards to changing the culture of your school. Um, so Charlie, what did you gain from that presentation? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Todd had so many things that he threw at us and he did. He talked about like managing ourselves through this and making sure that we build that culture of connection and looking out for kids, getting their darn names right is one of the things that he said that resonates so much because if we miss that little thing, if we miss the way a kid pronounces their name, we may be d dismissing them and be one more adult that they don't trust as a result. It's so minor, it seems, but it's actually so big. So that stood out to me. And then he's just a superstar. He does this all the time. He's got great later, uh, leadership capabilities. So um, he's got a great resource too. I'll tell you guys about that. It's four simple steps to difficult conversations. Listen, y'all. If you're in any kind of leadership position, which if you run a classroom, you can use this with your parents too and with students. Um, but if you're in any higher level leadership this is roles, this is really helpful. It's about those difficult conversations that you don't like to have. So these are four simple steps to get through that. So he was- All right, I'm probably not getting in order, but- for okay. some reason, Dwight Carter is coming into my mind <laughs> <laughs> with his book, Be Great. Um, I know that both me and you had an opportunity. We did a little bit different um, way of presenting here, whereas more of a conversation, kind of I'm similar to what we're doing right now. So uh, both Charlie and I had an opportunity to, to speak with him and ask him questions. So um, what did we gain from the wonderful Dwight Carter? So a lot of people put on the feedback form that they absolutely loves Dwight, which has happened every time we've had him for a summit, by the way. Um, they loved that he said, connect before correct. Connect before correct. And it's so simple. Again, we hear about connection so much, but it truly is so important. So he mentioned about that self-awareness that we need to have as leaders as we show up to others. And he does a lot of leadership in Columbus and his own school district. So that absolutely makes sense. He's got a great resource with his book too. If anybody would like to have that, you can just, um, they're called, it's called five principles to improve school culture from the inside out, which I love. And I have that book too. I think you do too. Don't you, Josh? Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I have a sticker on my, <laughs> on my laptop. So yeah. I love Dwight. He's phenomenal. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've had him on the podcast before and just a wonderful human being. So yes, yeah. I'm so glad he was a part of the, the summit and 
I'm really glad that folks connected with what he was talking about because he's got so much wisdom. He does. Oh, let, me just say, let me say one more thing about what Dwight said that people resonated with is we asked the question, are adults misinterpreting kids behavior? And he said, yep. you know, we really are. And he said, there's actually a lot of blame because there's underlying frustration. So connecting before correcting really resonated with people because they realize that we're just, we're misinterpreting it, which is why we're doing what we're doing, the language of behavior. Yeah. And like similar to what you were talking about when we first started this conversation was just the fact that people are frustrated and they, they want it to be corrected as soon as possible, like a magic wand coming in. This is the one strategy that's going to fix everything. And as we know, that's, that's not how it works. You know, each person is, each student is an individual, has individual needs, has things that are going on in their life. And so, yeah, that connection point with each person is, is huge. All right. Let's go through the next one that's coming to mind. Oh, okay. This is uh, Sabrina, Sabrina Vaz yes. and Dr. Herbert Monroe. Mm -hmm. um, they did something very unique with sound and they had like a variety of different instruments and setting the mood and it was, it was quite the ordeal. It was awesome. Um, so we just share kind of what they talked about in their presentation. Yeah. And I loved the part where they did talk about this as like sound therapy that they could bring into the classroom. Because a lot of times we're like, well, how do we actually utilize this? And they demonstrated, they had a long list of all of this information and like strategies. But not only that, not only the classroom, but how do you bring it into your staff meetings? How do you bring it into your meetings? Like um, Dr. Monroe is a superintendent of schools right now in Virginia. And he, I think it's, oh, I want to say Surrey. Uh, anyway, um, but he's got a lot of leadership and people love him. So when he brought Sabrina into this, she's a somatic practitioner. So it helps us realize that when we talk about teaching the whole child, this is how we do it. This is how we incorporate those strategies right into the day. There's so much we can do with it. And they gave us a lot of strategies. That's what I loved. And by the way, Sabrina's got a great book called Glow Up. It's about healing and grief. I have the book. I love the book, um, but she's also got a great newsletter where she gives you practical tools and strategies to use calm, uh, like calming strategies around sound therapy too. Again, it's on the website, thrivingeducator.org yeah. forward slash summit. Awesome. Yeah. And that's, they, they, they touched on that a little bit. Um, obviously that's a, a huge component of, you know, strategies that we can use with our kids every single day. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep going. So I've got Dr. Julie Schmidt Hassan. I didn't yeah, say her last name. yeah. 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 Hassan. I always mess that up. I've had her on the podcast too. She's just a joy uh, to have a conversation with. And I know she's a resilience trainer. She does a lot of various things. She was at the campus. Uh, she's a professor also. Um, so what was her session all about? So her session was really great. It was about showing compassion and understanding rather than judgment. And that's what can make the difference with students. And that resonated with people so much. She told a story about a teacher, Mrs. Potts, that she had. And so the the audience was so engaged. I don't know if you remember, Josh, but the chat just blew up with her. I mean, it's just amazing how she can just capture people's interest by showing that compassion, but giving strategies. She's got a great book too. It's called Pause, Ponder, and Persist in the Classroom. I don't know how, like, I think she gave some of those away, but if, if you don't have it, it is such a simple tool to use. So she touched upon that, but mainly she gave other strategies too, which was really good because she's been in other summits and provided even more strategies or different ones this time. It was really great to have her. All right. The last one that I can think of is Lavana Roth, which kind of closed things down. Uh, we did a very similar thing as we did with Dwight, which was having a conversation with her. Um, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm going to brag a little bit. I had the wonderful opportunity to ask her questions, but Lavana is such a joy. She's out in Florida and um, she was, Man, just talking through uh, kind of a procedure that she's constructed over time. She has a background in sign language. So she was using a, a kinesthetic way of, of kind of um, allowing the audience to connect with what she's constructed. So we just kind of go a little bit further, Charlie, with, you know, what she was presenting on with Shine. Yeah. So she gave us something so tangible. And I love that she was giving us like hand motions for each of the letters in the acronym Shine. And people, again, people loved it. They loved having the strategies and they mentioned her by name at the end. And they were like, you know, I really loved her tips and ideas about creating relationships and taking care of ourselves. It's funny how much it all came back to us taking care of ourselves in the education space. 
I mean, it's, we have one more uh, speaker actually to talk about Leanne Recton, Dr. Leanne Recton, who talked all about self-care actually. But what they loved about Le Levana is how simple it was to use the tool and how adaptable it was across different environments. I mean, you could use this not only in education, but you can use it in the workplace. She uses it with the military, but the tips were just so easy to use and so relatable that anybody could do it with any age group. So Charlie, do you want to just close it out with Liana's uh, presentation also? Yes. Yeah, so Dr. Leanne Recton, she talked about self-care and how it's essential to any school behavior plan. So any kind of student success plan that we put into place always comes back to us. It always comes back to us. And she spent 15 years in higher education, primarily in communications. And then she specifically supports educators and faculty at the higher ed level so that they can focus on wellness. So she's, she's got a really unique approach to that. And um, she talks about how to integrate that into everyday practice like we all need. And uh, she's got an assessment for customized care. Like there's a self-care plan, self plan that you fill out a little quiz which we'll, we'll put that in there too. The, um, we'll put a link into that. But you take the quiz and then it actually gives you a customized plan for yourself, which is really cool. Awesome. Yeah, so for everyone, just to know this was a free event. We had a lot of giveaways during the summit. And then we also have a lot of free resources like Charlie was talking about on uh, her website, um, thr thrivingeducator.org. And like Charlie said, we'll have a lot of links in the, in the show notes for folks to, take advantage of. Um, I know that, you know, Charlie had already talked about um, a well-being um, free resource. So I've got that for those who are watching on YouTube, that link, but that'll be in the show notes also. Um, Charlie also, for those who signed up, they also got some additional resources. So we had not only the guests on the summit for the live event, but we also had some additional videos um, to continue the conversation, to provide additional resources. So can you just share, I know there's a lot of folks <laughs> that participated outside of the summit that people got uh, videos from, um, but do you want to just highlight a few uh, to let folks know who also you know, was a part of this School Behavior Solutions Summit? Absolutely. I will highlight every single one of them really quick, really quick, like a lightning awesome. round because they are <laughs> just so incredible. And people are like, oh my gosh, I was looking for this person. So Dr. Darren Pepper talks about leadership. He's got a great ebook. It's all on the website too. Again, don't forget to go, go to thrivingeducator.org forward slash speakers. All of these um, all of these resources we said that are free that are, are right there. And he's got a great resource about walking in your purpose. It's really great. Dr. Cameron Caswell, she and I wrote our first book together. And she talks about, she calls herself the teen translator. She's an adolescent psychologist, but she's got a great parent quiz there. Are you on the right track with your teen? Yeah. And so by the way, uh, if you haven't registered for this event, you could actually go register on the website still. Even though the live virtual summit's over, all of these emails that we're giving people who registered will come to you. So make sure you still register if you want this, or you can go right to the website. So she's got that great resource for parents. And then we've got Luke Wall. He does, he's an executive director for only seven seconds, which, oh my gosh, you guys, he's like a loneliness expert. And that is an epidemic right now, loneliness. So he's got a, a great like parent guide for teenage loneliness. So go grab that too. Dr. Brandy Kelly, she's a superintendent. And she talks a lot about self-reflection, has a guide about that, but she does a lot of leadership as well. So you're going to want to see what she has to say in those emails that are coming to you as well. Allison Apsey, now I know you know her pretty well. Josh, if I miss anything about Allison, please let me know. But she's an educational leader and author. Yeah. I mean, doesn't she do such a great job in educational leadership? Oh my gosh. Allison is just, she has so many skills and talks. She travels all over the country. I swear she's traveling every day. Um, you know, the resource that we have for her is she's specifically talking about student behavior solutions that she implemented as a leader herself um, under the kind of the restorative um, lens. So yeah, she's just a wealth of information. Yeah. And, and one of the things she gives away again for free at thrivingeducator.org forward slash speakers, y'all is she gives away the six pillars of leading the whole teacher. So oftentimes we're all about the students, which we need to be, but but she looks at the six pillars of leading the whole teacher. Love it. You guys got to go check that out. Then we have Rachel Weinsock. A lot of people were interested in Rachel because she's got a bullying prevention kit and her video is awesome. I actually interviewed her. I had her on the podcast and we jumped on again just for this so that we could talk about bullying prevention 
specific skills, specific tangible things you can just walk away and start doing today. So make sure you check that out. Sign up for the emails if you haven't gotten them yet. For the Just sign up for the summit and you'll get the emails with all of these videos. Okay, we're almost wrapping this up, but we've got to mention Lindsay Titus. She talks about breaking the behavior barrier. She is a behavior specialist, you guys. So she's got wonderful tips that you need to listen to. Andrea Bittner, she works as an ESL consultant. So if you have those L students that you need some support with, go check her out and um, listen to that for that video. So it's really great too. A few more here, you guys. It's They're just also worth mentioning. Jonathan Cranford, if you need to learn how to do ISS better, like Josh and I have our own thoughts about ISS and OSS, which you'll read in the book. Jonathan comes in with some really tangible things that you can do today, like right now in your ISS room. He's got, it's like the art of ISS. Um, and for teacher hiring too, he helps with that because you got to get the right person in place. Okay, last two, Dr. Erica uh, Bear. Dr. Erica Bear is a superintendent and she's an author. And she works with Tiffany Burns on the CTC Retour, uh, Resource Guide, which is the Connected Conversation Planning Guide. So check them out. They have a great resource. There's great videos, you guys. And I'm just so grateful they could be a part of all that we've done with the summit. Awesome. Man, that was a great lightning round, wow, Charlie. All right, so for those who are interested in all those speakers, all those resources, I have it up on the screen for those who are watching on YouTube, but thrivingeducator.org slash speakers. Um, you can find all of the variety of folks that we've talked about today um, in this episode. And then, of course, we'll have that link in the show notes for those who are listening on the audio platforms. So, Charlie, I mean, the summit was phenomenal, but I know a lot of people were busy. They you know, didn't get a chance to join us live, but they're still seeking information or maybe they got just a touch of what we've talked about with language behavior and they want more information. And we've got an exciting event coming up at the end of this month. So do you mind just kind of sharing that out? And while you do that, I'm going to throw up the, the link for folks to be able to sign up. Yeah, no problem. So you guys have asked for more tools and strategies for behavior. I mean, we, we do want to know how to respond effectively to student behavior. And I know we need to start with ourselves. That is absolutely part of the solution, but we have some more tangible strategies for you. So we have a webinar that we're doing on October 23rd. And if you get in those emails, you actually, we have a discount still happening. Um, it's not going to stay there forever though, because this is coming up soon, but you can go and Josh is putting the link there to sign up for that. But this takes a deep dive. It's called Tools to Decode and Diffuse Conflict. You asked for it. We want to give it to you. And when you show up live, um, actually, before that, when you, when you purchase this, you actually get a behavior assessment checklist as a bonus just for signing up and enrolling. And once you show up live, then we have even more resources for you. So I hope to see you all on October 23rd. It's from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you know that is Eastern Standard Time. And you can just sign up right with Josh. And he's putting that link yep. in there. So you can just click that link. Awesome. So we'll have that in show notes too for folks. And then I know, you know, if you're signed up on either one of our newsletters, um, both Charlie and mine, um, we're going to send that out to our community also. But just know that this is going to be more of an intimate setting where Charlie and I are really going to hone in on you all that are participants. And we even have a Q&A session so um, we can dive into specifics about what's going on within your classroom, on your campus, versus where we did the summit. <laughs> we had a lot of folks in one space. Um, this one's going to be a little bit more intimate. So um, if you want to take advantage of that, definitely check out the link and then sign up um, to get that discount code um, that Charlie was talking about. So um, there's a variety of ways to, to do that. Um, but the link is on the screen. And of course, like I said, we'll have that in the show notes. Charlie, we've got some exciting things coming up. So um, just wanted to mention that we, me and you are going to be building out a podcast here soon. So um, for those who are watching or listening, um, if you enjoy the conversations that me and Charlie have, we're going to have more of those. So I'm super excited about that project, but more excited about the book that we're constructing, the language of behavior. Um, definitely get on that pre-sale link and list. Um, I'm going to put that on the screen here for you all. And then of course, um, make sure that you're getting all the resources from the summit that we talked about. You can still access all those videos, all of the different free resources that were provided and just excited about the upcoming webinar. Um, and again, if you want to join us for that, Charlie, what is the date and the time again? October 23rd, coming up soon, you guys. 
and it's 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have about 60 minutes, and then when you enroll, you can actually put your own questions, so it's catered to you. We'll answer it in the last half an hour Q&A. Wonderful. So got the link there for you. Check that out. Charlie, such a joy to not only MC and you know have the summit go off with out a hitch. It was just a, a beautiful time, a four hour block of time with so many phenomenal folks. But um super excited about the webinar coming up and, and all the variety of projects that we have to help not only school leaders but educators throughout the country and around the world, um, specifically around student behavior. Me too. I can't wait actually and it's there's just such a need. So I'm glad to be doing this with you, Josh. <laughs> Thank you.